Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're checking out some custom ASUS and MSI RTX 3070 graphics cards. And I will be, of course, comparing them with NVIDIA's own Founders Edition model, which we looked at a few days ago. So if you're interested in learning how the RTX 3070 performs in general, gaming benchmarks, all that kind of stuff, then make sure you do check out our day one review. That was published just a few days ago, and I'll probably put a link for that in the video description. For this one, we're going to focus on stuff like cooler design, as well as the thermal performance, overclocking, and power consumption. So as a point of reference, let's start with NVIDIA's Founders Edition, which is likely going to be one of the smaller RTX 3070 graphics cards that you'll come across. It measures just 241 millimeters long, which is a little shorter than the 2080 Ti FE card, as that measured 267 millimeters long. And I give that as an example, as both deliver a similar level of performance. The 3070 also weighs just 1,035 grams, making it 22% lighter than the 2080 Ti model, which weighed in at 1,319 grams. Both are dual slot cards, and in the case of the 3070, it measures just 38 millimeters wide. So that's a pretty small product given the performance. And I have to say, like other GeForce 30 series Founders Edition graphics cards, the 3070 version looks very nice. It's a rather elegant design that'll suit most builds well. The only thing I don't like about the FE model is the single 12-pin PCIe power connector, as most of you will have to use the supplied dual 8-pin adapter, which looks pretty crap, and in this discussion, I suppose looks do matter, given that that is kind of the point. Also, on that note, the power connector is in the middle of the card, and this is typically something you want to avoid if you are prioritizing how the card looks, as running power cables across the card is a thing neat freaks seem to really hate. The idea here though is to allow NVIDIA to open up the end of the card, allowing air to pass through the heatsink and out the back side of the card. There is a fairly large 67 by 88 millimeter opening here and a lot of the airflow from the second fan exhaust here. This design means the PCB is extremely small, measuring just 165 millimeters long, which is quite impressive given that it houses the GO104 die, eight GDDR6X memory chips and a VRM big enough to power all of those components. On the back side of the card, we find a full length backplate, which protects the PCB beneath, and part of it is used to transfer built up heat away from the PCB using a thermal pad. I would have thought though that Nvidia would use more of these thermal pads, but apparently one will do the job. Then around at the IO panel, we find the same configuration as other Founders Edition 3080 and 3090 graphics cards. So a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. So that's the FE model, a very compact, smart looking 3070 I'd say, but now let's take a look at the ASUS Tough Gaming OC. It's no doubt going to shock you to learn that this is a much larger graphics card, and that is of course sarcasm. The Tough Gaming measures 301 millimeters long, so 25% longer than the FE model, while it stands 133 millimeters tall and that is excluding the PCIe connector, and that makes it 34% taller. Then finally, as a 2.7 slot card, it measures 52 millimeters wide, making it 37% wider as well. Now, given that it is a bit wider, longer, and taller, it might surprise you to learn that it only weighs 8% more at 1,116 grams. I know I was quite surprised by just how light this physically large graphics card is. When compared to the 3080 version of the Tough Gaming, we are looking at a heavily cut down cooler and PCB. That said, I really do like how there's no plastic on the card, apart from the fans of course. The fan shroud's been constructed from aluminium, giving it a really premium look and feel. And ASUS is using their Axial Tech fans, and since there are three in total, they've reversed the rotation of the outer fans to help reduce turbulence and the fans themselves each measure 90 millimeters in diameter. I should also note that the card includes a stop fan feature, which activates when the GPU drops below 55 degrees. Now the heatsink cools both the GPU and GDDR6 memory, as well as half the VRM, with the other half taken care of by a small heat spreader, which has also been used to strengthen the card. Then we see that ASUS has gone with a 10 plus 2 power phase design and the PCB measures 240 millimeters long and features a pair of PCIe 8 pin power connectors. On the back side of the card we find an aluminium backplate which weighs 123 grams and is used to strengthen the card. Unfortunately though ASUS has opted not to use the backplate as a heat spreader by not including any thermal pads. So while this is a cut down cooler to suit the $500 US MSRP, 
Overall, it does look more capable than what we're seeing on the FE model, mostly just because it is physically larger. Also on hand for testing is the MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Treo, and MSI is claiming an MSRP of $560 US for this model. I couldn't get the exact pricing for the Tough Gaming OC. It seems like the base model, so the non-OC version, that will be $530 US. So I'm expecting that the OC version will be pretty similar to the Gaming X Treo in terms of price. So maybe about $560 US. Anyway, the Gaming Extra is the physically larger card, so there is the potential there for it to provide better thermal performance. When compared to the Tough Gaming, it's longer again, measuring 323 millimeters long, so that's an extra 7%, but in terms of height, they are the same. But what all that means is the Gaming Extra is a suitably high-end looking graphics card, and it feels very high-end when you pick it up as it weighs 1,463 grams. Of course, once again, MSI is using their Trifroza 2 cooler with Torx fan version 2, but basically all you need to know is that it packs three 90mm fans, and unlike the Tough Gaming, all three fans spin in the same direction. Then around at the back we find another MSI graphene backplate, which wasn't really something I was a fan of on their 3080 model. It feels more plastic than anything else, and it has very little tensile strength, so it does basically nothing to support the PCB. Then moving around to the IO end of the card, we find the same basic configuration of the FE model. So there's just a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. That's a little bit disappointing given that we got two HDMI 2.1 ports on the Tough Gaming, but this probably won't be an issue for most gamers. Taking the cooler off reveals a cut down version of what we found on the RTX 3080 version, but overall it is still quite substantial. The only weakness here is the VRM cooling, which doesn't feature a dedicated aluminium plate on the main heatsink. Instead, it has its own very, very small heatsink. And then that very, very small heatsink is connected to the main heatsink using a thermal pad, but it connects quite poorly with the main heatsink, and I imagine heat transfer isn't very good. And if anything, all it does is help block airflow to the VRM heatsink. So a bit of a strange choice there. Anyway, the GDDR6X cooling looks quite good, as does the direct touch copper heat pipes for the GPU die. Overall, I expect this cooler to work well, though the VRM cooling could have been much better. Finally, over on the PCB, which measures 260 millimeters long, we find a nine plus two phase power design. And whereas ASUS split the VRM up for better power distribution, MSI has crammed the entire VRM for the GPU on the left side of the card. So it'll be interesting to see how hot this gets given the weaker cooler design. Finally, feeding power into the card are two 8-pin PCIe power connectors. Okay, so that's a very quick look over these new custom RTX 3070 graphics cards. Now it's time to see how they perform. For reference, the FE model peaked at 72 degrees with a fan speed of 1700 RPM and averaged a core clock speed of 1890 megahertz. The MSI Gaming X Trio, on the other hand, peaked at just 61 degrees with a fan speed of just 1300 RPM, and yet it maintained a core clock speed of 1935 megahertz, meaning it ran substantially cooler and quieter while also being faster. Then we have the ASUS Tough Gaming, which peaked at 62 degrees with a 1400 RPM fan speed. And again, it ran at 1935 megahertz. Again, much faster, cooler and quieter than the FE model. Now, when overclocked, the Founders Edition ran at 74 degrees with an 1800 RPM fan speed and averaged 1980 megahertz. So just shy of two gigahertz. The MSI Gaming X Trio that clocked slightly higher, maintaining 2040 megahertz on average. And despite that, it peaked at just 62 degrees with the same 1300 RPM fan speed. So that is very impressive. ASUS also managed 2040 megahertz as the average clock speed with the Tough Gaming. And this saw the GPU running at 63 degrees with a 1500 RPM fan speed. The overclocking headroom on these cards is pretty miserable. With the existing power limits, the AIB cards average 2040MHz in game, which is a 5% increase over the stock clocks. So couple that with the faster memory, and you get a 5-6% to FPS increase. And that's really all we have to talk about here, so let's move on. For that extra 5-6% to FPS boost, you're looking at an 11-14% to power increase. So not terrible, but it does make these custom RTX 3070 graphics cards less efficient as we're talking about a 30 watt increase in power draw. Now, here's a better look at the GPU die temperatures, both stock and noise normalized. 
unsurprisingly, the MSI Gaming X Trio is the winner here. It's the biggest, heaviest, and therefore has the most metal to dissipate heat with. That said, the ASUS Tough Gaming ran a very close second at 62 degrees out of the box and 61 degrees once noise normalized, so at that point GPU temperatures start to become somewhat irrelevant. Also, both were a reasonable improvement over the Founders Edition, and the MSI Gaming X Trio stacks up very nicely in the noise normalized testing. Here's a look at the PCB temperature directly behind the GPU. The MSI and ASUS RTX 3070 graphics cards are significantly cooler than the FE model. Again, the MSI Gaming X Trio delivered the best results, but with all 3070s running at under 60 degrees, they're really all winners here. The VRM temperatures are mostly good, though I can't help but feel MSI could have done a much better job here. Peaking at 74 degrees out of the box is certainly still a very acceptable result, but had they better cooled these components with the main heatsink, I feel the Gaming Extra would have beaten the tough gaming. But in the end, ASUS has done a better job of cooling the VRM. Finally, we have the GDDR memory temperatures, and this is another area where ASUS has done extremely well, keeping the memory of the Tough Gaming well below 60 degrees. Again, MSI could have done a better job here, but ultimately the results are still very good and well within spec, so it's really a non-issue. Well, there you have it, the MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio and the ASUS RTX 3070 Tough Gaming OC. Both are said to be coming in at $560 US, which is a 12% markup over MSRP, which seems pretty reasonable given how much cooler and quieter they are when compared to NVIDIA's Founders Edition model, uh, which is likely only gonna sell at MSRP for a month or so and then disappear forever in traditional FE fashion. ASUS has suggested that the base model RTX 3070 Tough Gaming, so the non-OC version, will start at $530 US. So if true, that seems like a much better deal, as you can just overclock it yourself if you care about getting that extra 1 to 3 FPS. MSI will also offer their Ventus 2X OC at $500 US, so the $500 US MSRP, but of course that won't be comparable to the Gaming X Trio. And I'm also yet to test that model, so perhaps that is something that we'll be able to do in the not too distant future. Anyway, that is going to do it for a look at the Tough Gaming and Gaming X Trio versions of the RTX 3070. Both are solid contenders, though once again I think I am leaning towards the ASUS model. I really do like that all aluminium fan shroud, and probably more crucially it has a dual bias which you won't find on this model. So, alright, I don't know what's gone wrong there, we'll just, cool. So yeah, if you liked this video, there's a button for that. You can also subscribe because we will have a couple of more, well, at least one more RTX 3070 video looking at some, some AIB models. And then of course, coming up quite shortly on the channel, we will have a whole lot of Ryzen 5000 reviews. Very exciting stuff. So yeah, make sure you subscribe for that. Also, you can join us over on Patreon if you'd like to get access to our monthly live streams. Tim and I do that live, obviously, because it's a live stream where we answer your questions live if you're, if you're not getting it by now it's a live thing uh we also have a discord chat where you can chat to us live there as well but that's in that's in text form and q and a's behind the scenes anyway if you're interested patreon link in the video description and that is going to do it for this one i think i've said that as well have i said i'm your host steve i'm your host steve and i'll see you again next time <laughs>